It's not very easy to make a microphone amplifier with a low noise figure. And I tried to do that uh, during the past weeks. I did many experiments during many hours and finally I found this circuit that worked quite good. By the way, it was based on a circuit of Philips in 1962, the cassette recorder circuit, and it's in one of my books, but anyway. I did some changes here, and this is how it all was made. And there are many things to tell about how to make a low noise amplifier. At first, of course, uh, use low noise transistors. That's very important, uh, but when you look, the, look on the data sheets on the World Wide Web and for instance study this transistor, the BC550C, you will see the test conditions and in that case you find for instance that the lowest noise is generated on 5 volt and also with a specific test frequency, uh, often uh, 1000 Hz. Um, well, that's of course uh, good that we have all these data. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, a circuit is often supplied not by 5 volts, but by 12 volts or so. So that's one of the aims of this circuit. It is supplied, it can be supplied uh, with voltages between 3 volts and 12 volts. And that's very good. Because in theory we have a lower noise figure on a lower supply voltage. And especially a supply current going from the collector to the emitter or in the other way, doesn't matter much. Uh, the collector current is in a certain way uh, responsible for the noise, for a big part. And of course also uh, everything that happens on the base of a transistor. Also responsible for the noise. Temperature also plays a role. Anyway, this is a quite good circuit and here are the, here's more information. I used this type of electric condenser microphone and it's here, this one. I ordered it on the World Wide Web uh, by Reigeld Electronics in Germany. And the data sheet tells us that we have to do with a um, capsule that can work between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. So that's good. Of course there are many other capsules that don't have such a, a big broad frequency band. But anyway, and um, well, two transistors here, and the key to a low noise is that we keep the collector current very low, and that's done here with quite high values here and a quite high value of a resistor that goes from the collector to the base. It's 820k. That's very high. Often uh, 220k does this job. And here it is 560k. 560,000 ohms. That's a lot. And there is a kind of back coupling here. It goes 
uh, out of the first stage of the transistor here back to the input and um, this part of the circuit is in a certain way a filter that was uh, in its original state made to uh, work together with a cassette um, head, pickup head of a cassette recorder. So a low impedance source, but I used here uh, this electric condenser capsule. And I changed in, uh, the one microfarad electrolytic into a one microfarad non-polar um, capacitor. So here the um, capsule gets its supply voltage via that 27k potentiometer and that is here connected to a filter unit. This is the filter unit that has the aim to filter out all kinds of, say, noise coming over the voltage supply, the voltage supply lead. And that's the aim of this whole unit. But of course we can take out here a somewhat higher current compared to here. Because we have here a 100 ohm resistor and here a 1000 ohm resistor. Anyway, that's the reason why I mounted here the condenser capsule to this point. A capacitor on the base of a first transistor in an audio amplifier circuit always um, acts as a kind of a high frequency limiter. It shortcuts a part of the frequency band and in this case 20 Hz up to 20 kHz it shortcuts a part of that high frequency down. But that has everything to do with the whole unit. This whole unit is in fact a kind of filter. But I found that um, it worked very properly with this microphone capsule. And here you can see on the scope when I'm talking that there is no distortion <coughs> and a good idea um, when you want to test a, a microphone amplifier is to whistle to the microphone and when you see a pure sine wave you are sure that there is no distortion in the audio amplifier. Of course when the whistle is too strong you will see distortion because uh, uh, sine wave waves change to square waves. So yeah, that was a kind of square wave. Anyway uh, you can also always see when a an, an, uh, microphone amplifier is healthy when you see these kinds of uh, oscilloscope patterns low noise there is no here there is no noise but of course I can lift up the amplification somewhat I've done that now So it's a quite unquiet uh, line here, but still no noise is visible. And that's good. That gives a, a very good idea about how such a uh, microphone amplifier will work in practice. So uh, back to the circuit, the overview. Now working on 8 volts and I can go to say the lowest value that it can handle, that's approximately 3 volts. 
let's see on the scope what this circuit does on 3 volts. Point three. Amplification is of course limited, goes down, but there's no, now I lift up the input amplification of the scope, but there's no, uh, say, distortion. Three volts. So, there's still no distortion on 3 volts and that means that you can supply this circuit out of a 3 volt battery. So 2 times a 1.5 volt battery in series of course. Carbon zinc I mean. The, uh, the voltage of a one carbon zinc battery is zero. Uh, sorry, 1.5 volt. So in series, uh, three volt. And for to be more certain, use for instance uh, three of these batteries in series. That means that you can use such a microphone amplifier everywhere where it is needed without, say, a power supply that goes to the mains. Pen over somewhat and then I will stop. A lower resistance here uh, lifts up the amplification. And of course when you want to make it in a more or less professional or semi-professional way the whole circuit has to be mounted in a metal box to shield it.